In this video, we're going to show you how to put 20 inch, inch and a half diameter handlebars on this 2019 Street Glide CVO. Hello, everybody, we're back. I'm Robert with Hill Country Custom Cycles. Today, we have ourselves a brand new. Uh, almost it's got 200 something miles on it. 2019 CBO Street Glide and I know what you're saying <laughs> you're not gonna put those handlebars on that bike are you well we are these are 20 inch hellbent bagger bars made for the late model Street Glides now, this is the hellbent series notice it's got the curved upright guy likes tall handlebars he wants tall handlebars we're gonna put them on there and I think it's gonna look cool as hell so follow us along and we'll show you how to do it first things first we're gonna get the seat off get our saddlebags off and get this tank out of the way so we don't risk you know doing any damage to it scratching it in it whatever first and foremost fender cover you don't want to drop a socket on your front fender it happens it happens a lot if you don't have a fender cover get an old towel or whatever but just be sure and put something over it up like that and kind of lifts it off itself. Let me repeat that for both sides. All right, so we're about to pull this tank off. As you saw, super easy. I already did a heck of a job making these tanks uh, come off easier versus years ago. But one super important thing, one tip, don't fill your tank up before you bring it home to work on it because it gets super heavy. I'm not sure how many gallons they hold, but you figure you know eight pounds per gallon and you've got to pick it up and not mess up your gas tank. So we're gonna find out if this guy filled it up or not. I know he knows better, but let's find out. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's less than a half. So I'm going to take it off, put it somewhere right way out of the way. Well, you don't have to worry about it. Next up, we're going to take the fairing off. As I said before, Harley did a killer job designing these new fairings on these bikes. They come off very, very easy compared to older models. So anyway, we're going to pull this little dash panel off right here. Then we're going to take the bolts out of our fairing. We've got four bolts back here, three up here. We'll leave the center one in to pull our windshield off and then we'll take it out and uh, get this front fairing off. That's a 5 30 seconds Allen, by the way. And then do the same for the other side. And we have our two connectors. Got this one, the tab is over here. Just like that. And this one, the tab is on top. Right there. Yeah. And this is a T twenty seven, by the way. Take my windshield trim off. still there that holds the fairing on all right this is the left handlebar controls these two are for the right this one here that's the throttle by wire sensor and this is for the heated grips which is your uh, heated grips This is the other heated grip connector right here. All right, so we've got all that. Everything's loose, out of the way, bolts undone, connectors undone. You don't have to take this whole deal off. Just you want to lift it up and kind of hinge it back and it'll stay right there. 
just like lift it up carefully and just kind of rotate it back. All you're trying to do really is expose your handlebar bolts right here and that's it for now. And just let it kind of lay there. Just kind of pull these wires out so I don't snag on anything pulling the bars off. But you know, here's my throttle sensor with the heated grip portion of it. These two over here, heated grip connector, and then the other CAN bus that was on this side. So now I've got all the wiring out of the way and I can take my top clamp off and pull the bars off. But first, we're gonna loosen these controls up and let the controls kind of lay down out of the way. Uh, then we'll pull the bars off. I leave my lines attached for now because I don't want fluid going everywhere. I'll show you how I do that later. But you want to cover your master cylinders and whatnot up with something so they're not hitting paint or whatever. I use these trusty little bags right here. Some of you may be familiar with them. Some of you may have seen them in my other videos. You can use some like these or find something, anything, to wrap this up. That way we can just let it lay there and not hurt anything. All right, so now we're at the point we need to get the uh, clutch line and the, the brake line out of here. Uh, we're gonna tackle the clutch first. It's a little more difficult than the brake. Not the end of the world, but I've got a, an, at least an easier way to do it. What I like to do is loosen the exhaust up and just get it away from the bike far enough to where I can get this cover off. Now there's no fluid that's gonna come out. This is strictly just a chrome cover. But you see, I can't get it out of here without hitting my exhaust. I don't want to take it all the way off because getting all that stuff lined back up just takes a long time and it's a real pain. You can just loosen everything up, get that thing out of there and then put the deal back on, tighten everything back up and save yourself 30 minutes to an hour. So I'm going to loosen some things up. I'll have to take my floorboard off, remove this front heat shield, take that off of there. And I'm also going to loosen where the exhaust attaches to the head. I'm just going to loosen those bolts up and everything I can to get this exhaust where it'll kind of just see so this thing kind of comes out like that boom right there all right now we got that out of the way we don't have to take the transmission cover off or the side cover off it's just uh, this chrome cover that reveals the hydraulic line right there now you want to kind of follow this routing See where your zip ties are and your clamps, like there's frame clamps along here. There's two of them, you gotta take those off. And just identify your routing. Maybe take pictures of it with your camera so you can route it back the same way. Because if you don't, you could potentially, you know, get a cable bound up or something in the triple trees when you turn if you don't route it properly. So you always really wanna follow factory routing. We're gonna start working our way down, unclipping stuff, getting everything loose, work our way down. And then the last thing we're gonna do is take this loose, put a little cap on it, and then we'll just ease this clutch deal out and really not spill that much fluid at all. Watch for any exposed fluid. All right, so same thing for the ABS line. We're gonna just kind of follow the routing, see what we have in the way, you know, get a good idea of how to put the new one back on there. But we gotta get the side cover off. Pop that out. Here's all of our block bolts. We're gonna have to open up a little bit of this so we can see our line and uh, just get this thing loose. Once I take the line off, I'll put this on there and tighten it down and that prevents my fluid from leaking all over the place. They come in our master kit. Let's get this thing loosened up to where we can access it. I'm gonna pull that down and the line pushes out. right there kind of pull that out of the way and set it to the side now our line's pretty well exposed I'm gonna get that off and push it back
quick little tip. When you go to mount handlebars, you only have two hands if you're by yourself. Set everything up so that you can grab the bars and get them up there and get them kind of lined up. And then you can do everything else with one hand while you're holding the bars with the other hand. Okay, so we got the bars in place. We went ahead and used our uh, Gorilla Grabber clamp. We recommend using this on bars taller than 12 inch so you don't get any slip at the riser. And being that these are 20s, we want as much grip as we can. We'll go back later and adjust the bars and run the set screws down, but for now, we just want it in place. The wiring, it's not as confusing as it looks. You've got your CAN bus, which is your switches for the left, as well as the heated grip connector, which is that one that goes down here. This is the right side because it has the two on there. And then we've got the throttle by wire connector right here that goes to the right. So you want to route them pretty much like that down through there. And then we're going to put the fairing back up over the bars and connect these connectors back on the fairing where they're supposed to be. We've got the handlebars in place. I put the fairing back up on here temporarily and I went ahead and put my side bolts in there just to make sure it's lined up. What I want to do is get the handlebars adjusted where they feel good to me before I get all this put back together because the clamp isn't very accessible once it's all back together. So I've, I've done this little deal and this is also part of our installation kit, but I've got an Allen wrench I've cut off really short right here. And that allows me to get up under this fairing just like so with the fairing in place. What I can do is loosen these up a tad and then I can adjust my bars, put them where I want to, and then we'll take the fairing off and uh, go ahead and tighten everything down. Right there. That's where they feel good. Unfortunately, the, this customer is about the same height and, and build that I am for the most part, so he should be in pretty good shape where I set him. So we're gonna pull that fairing back up, go ahead and tighten that back down, and set our set screws on the grabber, and then move on to the next step. All right, so we've got the, the fairing pulled back out of the way, and that's, again, that's what's nice about these late model bikes. It's so easy to do that. I loosen these up, set the bars in place. Now I'm gonna go back and tighten these down. And there's probably a torque setting to this. I go off a of feel. You can torque it to the, the factory spec, or I like to get these things just a little past snug. Just evenly all the way around. Just get them snug. You don't have to put the hammer to it. It's not gonna fall off. Get them all even, and then we're gonna set our set screws, which this is what's doing most of the work right here. And you don't have to crank these down super hard. Get them snug, there's three of them there. And the cup on the bottom of the, the little set screw itself is gonna dig into the bars, more so than the knurling does. And just give us that added little insurance. Now that these are in place and they're tightened down, they ain't moving. You know what I mean? It's tight. Now, if you go try to pop a wheelie, they might move on you. I can't guarantee that, but you know, you're on your own there. But uh, anyway, that's set. Now we can put our fairing back up and get our bolts in there and start plugging in harnesses and hooking up lines. Just get these started. Don't tighten them down yet. We really are just doing this for fairing alignment. That way it's, it's where it's gonna be whenever the job is done. Heated grips, left side switches, cam bus. I've got the right side. And then under here, we've got our throttle ball wire. I've got my fitting kind of just put in there. It's not tightened down yet. I'm kind of mocking it up because I need to determine how to cut this line or where to cut it at. And, and that's kind of the beauty of this internal stuff. You know, we're not having to rely on predetermined line lengths, you know, that are pre-made and come up short or too long or whatever. We've got enough extra length here and we're just gonna cut this to whatever we think is perfect. And then we're gonna put it on this compression fitting here and tighten it down and it's done. Super simple to do. But in doing so, you know, you can cut this stuff with a pair of, a pair of wire cutters dikes whatever but what it does if you look at that end right there 
it kind of smashes it down. If you do it like that, you want to stick something in there and just kind of open it back up and round it out. That way you get maximum fluid flow. Or if you have the room to do it, which in this case we do, I'm just going to use this little plumber's tool here, put it in there and cut it off like I would a piece of copper pipe or something. Just run that around, tighten it, run it around, tighten it. And this just gives it a little cleaner cut and doesn't smash the tubing, you know, like a pair of wire cutters does. Okay. Now I've got a much more round, concentric cut. Go around my burrs out right there. And this has just got a, a nicer looking hole right there. Then we determine our line length, which in this case, I've got to run this this piece down in between these two connectors, so I, I pulled that one off, but it's gonna go down here like so. I'll give myself a little bit of extra. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off, and I'm gonna come back and just cut it with one of these, just to make a little cleaner cut for myself. There we go. Now it's ready to go in my fitting, but before we do that, we're gonna take this back off, go ahead and tighten everything up down here, and then we'll put it back down there and do our final tightening on the banjo bolt. You see how this is straight and that's tapered? This fitting only goes one way. This straight part right here, which is also the smaller diameter versus the tapered, that goes in to this fitting there. If you look down in there, it's, it's nice and sharp and that'll fit down into there. And then the tapered portion goes into here, that fits in there like that and that's how it seals. Put that on first, and we put that on. And we seat that all the way in there as far as we can. We're gonna rotate it like so, so that we're not binding anything up. Go tighten her up. Just so it's not rotating on the line. Feed it back down through here. Okay, so now we're gonna do the exact same thing for the clutch. We're gonna go ahead and just kinda put that in there. It doesn't have to be tight, just kinda get it in there. And then uh, we're gonna cut this line to length and then put it onto our, our fitting down there and then we'll come back and snug everything up. And from there we can go up top and hook up the master cylinders. Okay, now we got the bottom side connected. We've got to get our master cylinders connected. Same process. The only difference, you want to go ahead and mount your controls and get them kind of set into place before we determine the length we're going to cut this. Now, now we do have some movement we can work with, but ultimately we want in the exact position when we cut this and bolt all that together. You know, earlier I told you I like to use these, but in a situation like this, I can't get that in there. So I'm going to have to cut this off right here and then just open it back up with my pocket knife or whatever else and try to straighten it out. And again, it's not the end of the world. I just, I prefer this when I can. Okay, so that's all there is to it. You wanna make sure this line is seated up into here. So I was trying to hold it up in there while I was getting it started to make sure this doesn't slip out of that fitting. So to take a little extra care, but once it's all mocked up, set up, tighten everything down nice and snug, and there you go, man. Super clean. We don't have any cables hanging out, flopping in the wind. It's ready to rock and roll. So now the top's buttoned up, lines are done. They ain't hanging out, you know, it looks great. Now we need to bleed them. I've got two separate videos, uh, one for bleeding ABS brakes and one for bleeding a hydraulic clutch. I'll put the link to those down in the description, so if you wanna see them, you can click on them and check them out. We're gonna go ahead and move in to button this thing up and uh, get her done. And this is actually what pulls the exhaust back into its factory position since we pulled it out.
All right, folks, here it is, finished product. Uh, turned out really good. An awesome looking bike to begin with, but man, it really needed some bars and these took it over the top. Uh, by the way, we get this question a lot. I'm five foot 11 on a good day. These are 20 inch Hellbent bagger bars. So from a side profile, this is what it looks like. Hope this video was helpful. Please comment below with any questions or with any topics you would like us to cover in the future. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and subscribe if you don't mind and give us a thumbs up or a like. Thanks for watching.